Austin, awesome. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like to play, keep your play. That's right. Uh, also, um, Mr. Powell is going to discuss employee communications, um, uh, how we get our information from, as the county standpoint, out to all the employees, uh, the different ways that are available for that communication whether it be emails, whether it be um, snail mail, uh, whether it just be uh, in-house communications, whatever those mo may be. And then also um, through that process, looking at incentivizing the county employees for, let's say, their good ideas uh, and cost-saving measures. That's some way of doing that. Chair, um, what you're thinking? Yeah, I mean, I, and that's kind of two different issues. I, I had talked, mentioned a while back the idea of, uh, I, I like the idea of, uh, it's called a quality, quality of work life. You know, let the employees create a committee of different departments, employees out of different committees, and allow them to meet X number of hours a month, where they meet two hours every two weeks or something like that, and discuss what are ways that we can improve their quality of work day and make them more efficient and effective in their environment because we at our level can't see what they have to do every day and then be able to take that committee and look at ideas it, it's not a it's you know every everything would still have to go through management and stuff like that but they can look at ideas that might be beneficial to their work day and then part of part of doing all this would be to you know, I run into employees that say, hey, we don't feel like we hear anything from, you know, our end of the world. And, of course, a lot of that is they're not listening when our end of the world is speaking to. And I understand that. But I think we need to we need to realize that if we send out an email to all employees, then not necessarily all employees might have access to a computer during their eight-hour work day. So it makes it cumbersome for some that either aren't computer literate or don't have access, uh, ready access to computers. So that's where some of the communication that I was trying to do is how can we, from top down and bottom up, how can we effectively communicate better both ways with the employees? Which are, and again, when Bill and I talk, these are kind of two different things. One's a quality of work life thing, but it kind of partners in with how are we communicating up and down the management chain. We uh, communicated with the employees by direct mail on the changes in the insurance, some of which said they did not receive them. We communicated, we sent two different methods, had two different methods on the insurance. We only used one method to send out the notification on the buyback. The response on the buyback was significantly more than the insurance. Funny how that works. Isn't yeah. It? So I think you sometimes hear what you want to hear, sure. and you participate the way you want to participate. I'm not saying that we cannot improve that, but I think some of the some of it is pretty much <clears throat> as I say, you're not. I know, and I, but I, I think that on that line, I, I would think that you kind of put that in a long term. And the reason I say long term is simply because good communication is something that you want to continually work on all the time. Sure. You're not going to actually fix the problem over a short-term situation. So I think leaving that in there is, is and classifying that as long-term is something that we need to continue to work with and continue to follow with and look at uh, different ideas and different things that we have there. So to continually improve the program. Right. But, <coughs> you know, I guess, and my, I guess my reason for bringing it up here was to we can discuss it, or we can kind of say this is a this is a topic of interest, and we want to create a more formalized um, review of how are we doing this. But Joe, I, I fully understand you know what you're saying, and I you know I mean, it, it's funny how that works sometimes. Well, it may be something it may be something just as simple as we send send the information out there, we're sending it to the individual. May also need to make sure that each department head has it posted on their bulletin board or somewhere where everybody will have the opportunity to see it. Uh, I, I know how it is sometimes. I know from the private sector, sometimes you have to 
everybody can look and they can find an excuse when they're looking for an excuse. Sure. But my goal is what I try to do is to remove as many of those excuses as I possibly can so that there is no excuse. Well, it, it would not hurt my feelings, and, and I don't know how the rest of the commissioners feel, but when there are, and, and this wasn't based on health care or anything in particular, this is just kind of a broad general conversation, but the joke, talking about health care, for instance, when you go out, I know Paige, you went out, you guys went out, and you did a lot of direct partner to the partner meetings. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if there was a sign-up sheet that said, Willie Joe, Millie Sue, and Betty Jean attended this, and they initial it says, yes, I attended this meeting. And and then they, you know, that, that's like you said, Bill, that's taking it off the table. You signed here saying you attended this, so don't tell me you didn't hear what was said. Mm, we do that now um, on a lot of things. And one thing that's coming up with HR is with the, um, the shift that you all approved in the partner providers for our health insurance plan, there'll be the plan document, insurance cards, and some other information to go out to the employees. So just like what we did with the wellness program, um, HR is going to go into every department. They'll come in at 6 o'clock in the morning. They'll meet down at the sheriff's office at 6 o'clock at night and meet with all the employees again to have a face-to-face -face whenever they hand out that information. Currently, everyone's gotten a letter in the mail. They know there's some changes. They've already been working on the next year's wellness program as an HR to make those contacts there. But this will be an additional time for that staff to be available to those employees and, and on their ground to be able to sit down and say, now here's your information. Do you have any additional questions? And the value in that, I think, is, is some of what you're hitting on. They start to ask you about other things. Right. You're building those relationships. And so they say, well, I had this question on insurance, but you know, what about my dental? Or what about my performance evaluation? Or other things to come up. And, and from that, HR kind of puts that together at the end to look at where the employees are needing some additional education or like more information on something. Well, the wellness plan, you guys went to effort to effort to effort to effort to say, hey, we're doing a wellness plan. If you get involved, then your new insurance isn't going to be affected as much. Now that that's become reality, they're saying, well, I didn't really understand this wellness plan was so important and all that kind of stuff. Well, if, if you had a sheet and they attended a, a, a talk on the wellness plan, they initial off and so I'm, I'm sorry, you said you attended this meeting. And I think we need to find a way to cut down some of this. They signed in. We have that yeah. on everyone who attended that yeah. meeting. Yeah. So that, that's, again, the... Oh, that's one of the reasons why I say you look at something like that long term because it is an ongoing process sure. that you work on all I'm good with the time, that. Uh, regardless of whatever the issue is. And a lot of your issues, they're going to have to take a different tack one way or the other of how you address that communication. So I think what you're saying has merit. I just think it's something that we need to be looking at. Right. Yeah. All the way down the road. Okay. What about what about the idea of creating a committee that looks at quality of work issues within each of the departments, where it's kind of bottom driven, where you got the rank and file that are involved in something like that, and they're able to bring ideas up through the management chain and say, hey, if we did this, it might work better. If we did that, it might work better. You know, the, the only issue with that, I mean, there, there's, there's all kinds of good ways, again, to kind of get the next great idea that can be utilized. The problem and the frustration, and I've experienced the same thing, is that when you provide a way for folks to put their idea forward, to them it's the greatest idea since Grits. But if it's not a good idea and department heads, staff, and the commission makes the decision that it's not a good idea, then you really begin to take the air out of that whole process because of so, so the way you do it, it can be accomplished, but the way you do it, you have to be really, really careful about it. Because some folks, as I say, everybody's idea is a great idea. Uh, feasibility, practicality, of whether or not you put it into practice, uh, there's a lot of information that goes in. Once you make the decision that it's not a good idea from your standpoint, you then deflate that whole issue and, and all of a sudden it begins I've dealt with, I mean, I've heard, but I've done the same thing in my business, and they'll say, well, it don't matter what you do, they're going to shoot it down as a bad idea. You know? uh, so that's, that's, then all of a sudden you kind of get bad feelings there. So, uh, 
I think that it, it has merit, but we just need to be real, real careful about how it's done. Well, there's a lot of Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies that do this, and I think there are probably models out there yes. that we can do some research on some different models. That, that's kind of the main point of the conversation today is, can we do a little research on a couple models and then maybe at, at, a, at the New Year retreat come back and say, can we look at these models, we can modify this and modify this and create our own model that will work to try to eliminate some of those the issues you're aware of. I, 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 would think, though, I, I would think that that would be, rather than putting a committee together to kind of come up with an idea that you might put a committee together of folks that really just do not have, let's say, the professional background, they're tied in too tightly as an from the standpoint of emotions gets tied into it. Uh, that really should be something that would come out from staff and HR to get to work on. Because they would have to implement it and they would have to put it in place. And I'd be concerned with it to micromanage each department. Exactly. Yeah, if we did it. I, I agree with what you're saying. It's certainly worth looking at. But if we um, get a committee together trying to supersede the authority of department heads or the knowledge that someone may have in a certain department that a committee member wouldn't have and getting a micromanage in those departments. <coughs> I do agree. It's, it's certainly an uh, issue to look at. It just got to be real quite methodical on how we put something together like that that we don't wind up. Uh, well, you just don't never know. That, but, but I'll also say this. I think if you've got a good, and I'm confident we do, if you've got a good system and process with good department heads that are already communicating with the staff, with, you know, with their staff. You know, what you're going to get a lot of times is you're going to get those good ideas that's coming forward. And then, you know, the department head at that point is kind of sitting here looking at it. Well, yeah, it's a good idea, but let me explain to you about the practicality of putting something like this in place. It might be a good idea to uh, I'm going to just use the analogy. It might be a good idea to bring all the equipment to a place to do the maintenance on that, to, to oil it and lube it. it. might be a better idea than it would be to take a oil and lube truck and go to all the different sites. There may be some costs that could be saved in that, but that's something that the department head would be able to analyze and make that decision. I'm not sure that that would whether it would need to come all the way up to the top until the department head is convinced, yes, this is a good idea, then that department head would bring it on up to Mr. Pritchard, and then Mr. Pritchard would look at it, and then we'll bring it to the commission for, you know, that type of thing for, for the idea. There's a process, but we have to be real, real careful about how that process is done so that, so that we have good ideas coming forward, but not only just the greatest idea today from from the presenter standpoint, but it, as well, is it practical? Is it something that we can actually put in place and save the county money? Mr. Pritchard, yes, at one point that Lindsay had staff meeting with the department head had a goal setting program on you? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> when you, um, when we sat down with our, the step you mentioned earlier about the goals, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, Department heads, we talk to their supervisory level, and if it was depending on the size of the department, the entire staff, and uh, talk about goals. These are things that we think we can accomplish and get input from them. It was not necessarily, uh, it, was, it was goals for improvement of service, not so much related to cost savings, but that can be included well, in it. Yeah. It, it was just, is there a way that we can improve, for instance, in public works? How can we get a quick response on notification about a pothole or um, a stop sign being down or whatever, rather than that particular partner being responsible for it, everybody assuming the responsibility, how they work through that. So, uh, but yes, ma'am, we did Okay. 